<sighs> oh, hey, good morning, Marcel Church. I, I've been talking with some of you during the week, and uh, you've been telling me how you've been coming to church and how much you've enjoyed being at home in your pajamas. And uh, so Linda was nice enough to loan me her robe today. And uh, some of you said, you know, you've been watching from, from bed and your PJs. And some of you, maybe not even with that much. And, and to one of you out there, if you ask me if I could see what's going on, absolutely, I see all of you. And I know exactly what you're wearing to church each Sunday morning. And uh, to the question that you asked, the answer is boxers. That's what I'm seeing. So uh, this morning, I want to just kind of give us an update as we uh, look at the next week and the weeks ahead. We are going to be joining uh, in worship uh, uh, in, a, in a limited capacity, starting to phase in more and more as time goes on. Starting next week, June the 7th, we're able to seat 75 people, and you should be getting an email. So look for your emails, look on our Facebook page, and we'll be getting that information out. If you haven't been getting that, uh, please contact us here at the church so that we can give you more information and that'll, that'll tell you all you need to know about what it's going to look like next week and, and going forward. We also will be having this Thursday night a virtual prayer vigil. And you will sign up on, a, on an app that the, the church now has, uh, is going to provide. And you will be able to uh, get a, a certain time frame. And we'll, we'll send out information about the things you can be praying for. And, and then you can pray during that time from home. So uh, we're, we're going to ask on Thursday that our congregation in particular will be in, in prayer. So uh, let's, let's prepare our hearts to, to, for worship. And a lot of crazy things going to be coming up. Again, 12 weeks. I just can't hardly believe that it's been that long. Um, God continues to bless our church and you continue to support us. So thank you very much. Let's pray for our time together this morning. God, we ask this morning that uh, we would... We would wake up, that we would get up, and we would be ready for your word. Lord, help us to, to, uh, to, to look forward to what you have in store for us today, tomorrow, throughout the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen.
As we come to worship God this morning, let's hear these words from Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. This is uh, Pentecost Sunday, and so today we want to open our hearts and ask that God's Spirit would again be poured out on us, that, that we would continue to dream dreams and see visions and look forward to the future. So as we worship God this morning, let us come to, before God in a moment of prayer and ask for His Spirit to be poured out on us today. Let's pray. God, we thank You and we praise You for the, the goodness that you, that you share with us even in difficult days and, and times. Lord, we, we believe Scripture to be true and that we, we ask that your Spirit would move in our midst, not just in our plans, but through our lives, through our church, into this community, and even into the world. So prepare our hearts for worship, God, and, and help us to lift up your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Let's worship the Lord together as we sing, How Great You Are. The father of creation, his splendor fills the earth. The lightning crash, the thunder sings his praises. The galaxies can't help but shout his worth. And my soul must sing to you. you are the word made flesh God's promise to the fallen he came with power to save the light of life was crushed for our rebellion he died our death and rose up from the grave my soul must sing to you an offering. How great you are. My soul must sing. Oh, let the heavens ring. How great you are. Oh, how great you are. Our King will come with trumpet blasts resounding. To claim his blood washed bride. He'll rend the skies, descending in his glory. And in an instant, faith will turn to sight. And my soul must sing to you. Let's worship the Lord together as we sing, How Great You Are. Our God is great, the Father of creation. His splendor fills the earth. The lightning crash, the thunder sings his praises. The galaxies can't help but shout his worth. And my soul must sing to you an offering. How great you are. And my soul must sing. Oh, let the heavens ring. How great you are. Oh, how great 
you are. The Word made flesh, God's promise to the fallen. He came with power to save. The light of life was crushed for our rebellion. He died our death and rose up from the grave. you are our king will come with trumpet blasts resounding to claim his blood washed bride he'll rend the skies descending in his glory and in an instant faith will turn to sight and my soul must sing to you you are. Let us say with Christians together throughout the world this morning what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Let's hear God's word for us this morning. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Friends, these are God's good words and may he add his blessings upon them. So over the last few months, my phone, my iPad, my laptop, and even my wireless headphones have all used up just an amazing amount of battery life. I've been telling people I haven't had to use much gas as I haven't been driving hardly anywhere, but I've got cords hanging out of all my sockets. And I know before you send me a message, you shouldn't keep all your cords plugged into your sockets, but... We do what we have to do to survive in these days. As I'm trying to keep in touch with everybody, it's just battery life. Everything goes just like that. 
And uh, my headphones, I, I have noticed something interesting about them. There's a, there's a sound, there's a voice on there that when I push the button, the voice says, power on. In the same exact voice as I used to hear when coming down the elevators to, at the hospitals. So they've even found a new job for that lady, as she used to say when I got to the bottom, main floor lobby. And uh, just as I found all these devices struggling to keep up with the battery life that's demanded, I I've also found myself from time to time, as I've mentioned, finding my own battery kind of draining and needing to recharge. And so I I've been trying all kinds of different things to, to get recharged. Sometimes it's going for a walk. Sometimes it's eating junk food. That doesn't work too well. Watching TV, going, going out and doing things with uh, other folks when I can. Uh, but I've also uh, come to this time to re be reminded, which is a good thing. This is a good thing. That I need to surrender daily to God. That my power comes from God and not just from myself. Now, I don't want to clog things up, but my power comes from the presence of and the person of Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate Pentecost, which is celebrated 50 days after Easter and the resurrection of Jesus. And as I even thought about those words, I thought, has it been over 50 days already since we've been together and 50 days since Easter? And it has. I keep checking the calendar, and I've been checking the calendar a lot. What day is it? Today, as we're celebrating in worship, we're celebrating Pentecost. And you're wondering, well, what is Pentecost and why the bright, bright red shirt? Well, one of the liturgical colors is red, um, talking about the Holy Spirit. And so I thought I'd share that with you this morning, wear my, my liturgical shirt. We, uh, we look at the Holy Spirit as you wonder, what, what is the Holy Spirit? Who is he? And, and what is all of that about? There are a number of different names for the Holy Spirit, but a couple that I'll share with you this morning. The whole, Jesus said, I will send you a comforter, someone to comfort us in times like this. I will send you a counselor, someone to, to give us wisdom and to guide us. The Holy Spirit is also known as the helper. This morning I want to share a few verses from Scripture which talk to us not only about the promise of the Holy Spirit, but his presence and his power and what he means to the church. In the context of a discussion on being born again, in John chapter 3, verse 6, Jesus talks about the Spirit giving birth to spirit, to our spirit. And in verse 8, Jesus says, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now, I don't know if you catch this in this scripture, but it talks about the, the Spirit blowing like a wind, and that, that word is synonymous in Greek. Both Spirit and the wind are, are, are the same words used here. And Jesus is talking about how not only will God move like a wind into our lives and we can't always predict it and we, we can only see how it's moving, but I believe that that also means it, the Spirit is meant to move in our church as well in that way. We can come up with great plans and we should. Strategic planning is a wonderful thing, but we also need to be willing to move in a moment. And boy, we've had to move in a moment, haven't we? And as we go forward, we need to look forward again to see where God is leading us and what this new time is going to look like. Not fear it, but embrace it. And I hope and my prayer is in this last chapter of my ministry that I'm going to learn new things and new ways and see God work in a way that, that I, I, I couldn't even imagine. The Holy Spirit is a wind moving into my heart. And Lord, let that, that Spirit move and move me in new directions and, and us as well. In John chapter 7, verse 38. Here we're in the context of a discussion on who Jesus was and people questioning, is he the Messiah? Is he the one we've been waiting for? And Jesus promise, promises the coming of the Spirit to those who believed in and followed him. Jesus said, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, 
rivers of living water will flow from within them. Not just a stagnant pool, but if we follow and trust in Jesus, there will be this this overflowing of living water out into the world. And and we as as Christians are, God's job is to pour the water in, the Spirit. I think our job is, is not to clog it up. To be willing to say, Lord, each day, open me to your Spirit and your Spirit's leading. I want to be recharged by the, the living water that is coming within me. While they didn't have battery and ba- battery life, I think this passage does talk to us about what it means to, to be powered up, to have God flowing through us. And what a promise that Jesus gave to us. As we've been talking over the months, uh, we had reorganized our ministries and a lot of our church into the connect, grow, share paradigm. And uh, this morning, there's a couple of those, both connect and share, that are found in this passage in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. And, And as we connect with God, that water flows from within, the Spirit comes. But this morning, listening to uh, this passage, as we see what God is up to at Pentecost. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, Jesus gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my gift, the Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has has set by his own authority. Verse 8. Let's let's look at this carefully this morning. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. We will then have a message to share, good news with the world around us, a mission. He says, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. At times I've looked at this passage, and I know I've said it over the years, to say that we were called to have a mission in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. It's sort of like saying we were were called to have a mission here in Ackworth, and then in Kennesaw, Paulding County, and then in the United States, and then through all the earth. And today that happens in many ways. People from any part of the world could, could be tuning in on a particular Sunday or find us on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. That we have a responsibility to, to be ready to, to share good news with all of the world around us, starting here and just moving out further and further. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, and they were all gathered for a, 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 Jewish, a Jewish event and, and one of their festivals. And so everybody, it had already been organized that everybody would be in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? A 
couple of things jumped out at me as I've read this passage over the last couple of weeks. Suddenly was the first word that jumped together. A sound like a blowing of a violent wind came. Suddenly. We were going about our business. Everything was, was wonderful. And then suddenly, before we knew it, life had changed. And we were, we were all sent into our own homes and locked the doors and have been in quarantine in just a moment. But suddenly is another word in Scripture that comes to us. Here it describes the movement of God and His Spirit in our midst. Just as suddenly as we are sometimes sent into exile, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a wind, something that God is doing in our midst, something that he is calling us to do. And this wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. I hope that in your house, as you've been preparing to come back out into the world, that you've been praying and reading spending time with God and allowing him to fill you. If, if not, it's not too late. It really isn't. We can do that even now. They, they, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. I, I, I wish I knew what that looked like, but there was something dynamic and electrifying going on. These people were, were in the midst of a, a miracle. And as I, I looked on in verse 6, it says, they heard the sound a crowd came together in bewilderment. They didn't know what was going on because each one heard their own language being spoken. So it was, it was as if four or five people, 12, 11 people, the, the, the disciples were sitting there and, and people from France and Italy and Afghanistan and all of these different places were gathered and these people whom everyone knew didn't know any other languages were, were sharing the good news. It wasn't just that they were saying, hey, how y'all doing? But they were telling them in their own language about Jesus and why he came to die and what difference it made for them to be in a relationship with God through him. And God was empowering their message to touch people with the good news of the gospel. Utterly amazed is how this, this passage ends here as they look out and, and see the Galileans and aren't these just regular people is what they're asking. Aren't they just Galileans? And sometimes people look at the church and people and say, well, I know them, aren't they? Isn't that just my neighbor? Isn't that just the person in the cubicle beside me at work or on Zoom? And the message is, absolutely, in so many ways, we are ordinary just like everyone else except in this. We've come to understand the meaning of Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection to eternal life. And what that means for us to live and to move in this world that is so messed up in so many ways that we find hope. We find peace, we can find joy beyond ourselves and from the Holy Spirit within. And my hope and prayer for us today is that God will continue to move in us, to move through us, and to move beyond us. We need a fresh move of God's Holy Spirit as a church and I believe as a country. So pray for us. I pray for you, let's pray for our leaders, let's pray for our country that people no might know the depth of God's love for them in Jesus Christ. This morning as we come before him in prayer, let us ask him to release the Holy Spirit in a way again that we maybe have never seen in our lifetime. Let's pray. God, I do lift up all of uh, all of the things that we're going through and I believe that we've been going through them for a reason and I believe that the best is not behind us but yet we we have wonderful things ahead of us both individually and as a church and as a nation so God help us to 
turn to you for your power. To find our power turning on and being refreshed and renewed and recharged by coming to you, plugging into you, as Jesus said, abiding in him. Help us to know what that means and to experience that abundant life that Jesus came to give. God, in all of our homes today, help us to feel the move of your Spirit. Help us to be ready to move by your Spirit. We pray for all of the people in our church that are struggling and, and having difficulties with health and jobs, emotions. Lord, help, help them, help us to find your peace. And help us each day to seek not what it is we want in our lives, but to seek what you want for, uh, for us, to seek your will. And to that end, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path, for my told me fast he will hold me fast he will hold me fast for my Savior loves me so he will hold me fast those he saves are his delight Christ will hold me fast, precious in his holy sight, he will hold me fast. He'll not let my soul be lost, his promises shall last, bought by him at such a cost, he will hold Justice has been satisfied, and he will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life, he will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight.
It's been good being with you again this morning. I, I hope that again you're, you're looking, checking your emails. Make sure you're getting that message. The message, you've got to put some skin in the game, put your email address out there and get some information to us so that we can get the right information to you and also be checking on our Facebook page as our group, group Facebook page. And until we're, we're together both online and in church next week, may God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, may the peace of God which passes all understanding be and abide with you all both now and forevermore. God bless you. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path, for my told me fast he will hold me fast he will hold me fast for my Savior loves me so he will hold me fast those he saves are his delight Christ will hold me fast, precious in his holy sight, he will hold me fast. He'll not let my soul be lost, his promises shall last, bought by him at such a cost, he will hold Justice has been satisfied, and he will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life, he will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast. When the tempter would prevail, he will hold me fast. I could never keep my hold through life's fearful path.
just hold me fast. He will hold me fast. He will hold me fast. For my Savior loves me so. He will hold me fast. Those he saves are his delight. Christ will hold me fast, precious in his holy sight, he will hold me fast, he'll not let my soul be lost, his promises shall last, bought by him at such a cost, he will hold Justice has been satisfied. 